that no weapon formed against us has the ability to prosper. So God, ho, oh, God do everything. We learned one thing, Lord. We know how to give you praise no matter what. Uh, we know how to give you a thanks no matter what, God. Because it only moves what means one thing that you're still proving yourself. I said, as you rest on your feet tonight, come on. I want to bring the woman of God. Everybody just standing for a second. Grab your neighbor's hand for a moment. Lord, you said this. We're any two or three. Would touch and agree concerning anything. God, that you would be in the midst. God, we stand as a unified body tonight, touching and agreeing, God, that every need be met for the assignment that you've given Dr. Michael. God, we thank you for untold miracles. God, we call it from the north, we call it from the south, we call it from the east, and we call it from the west, God. But we thank you for an open heaven, God, God, that every promise that you've made to her shall be come to pass. Now we strengthen her in the inner man. We strengthen her, God, her heart, her mind, her focus, her vision. And God, we thank you, Lord, for the gift that you've given the body of Christ. And tonight, Lord, we open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to receive this ream of word that's going to change our lives. I want you to put your hands together and give God the biggest praise for this anointed vessel of God, Dr. Ambassador. Why don't you put your hands together one more time for the Lord? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God, we thank you so much, God, for your goodness and your mercy toward us. We give you praise for all that you are doing and all that you have done. Why don't you get your Bibles, and while you're doing that, give God praise for our pastor, Dr. John H. Boyd. and for Lady Ward in her absence. And for the Brewers, come on, give God a praise for them tonight. Yes, and to all of the saints of God and to Dr. Cheryl being present in our midst tonight. Dr. Cheryl, those three overseer elect, somebody ought to give God a praise for what he is doing. I said you can thank him and give him a praise better than that. Yes. The Bible says it is the Lord that putteth up one and taketh down another. And we thank God for the power of elevation. And I see Dr. Johnson in our midst tonight. Thank you. I see Dr. Johnson in our midst tonight. Why don't we give her a God bless you. Yes. And Lady Morgan and so many. You all just have to Forgive me because I have not seen my family in a minute. And I'm so excited to be home, to be back. So excited to be back. Thank you. Thank you. And also, I missed my class. Good Lord have mercy. I have missed my class so much. And I kept, you know, sitting over there going, but I gotta go home, I gotta go home, I gotta go home, I gotta go home. And I just had to relax because the more I said I wanna go home, the more the Lord made me say. <laughs> so I finally got smart enough to realize if I keep saying I wanna go home, I'ma be here a long time. So then I started saying, God is really good. He is really moving by his power. And then the Lord <laughs> permitted me to come home, amen. And I thank him for that. And Dr. Morgan, God bless you. I'm telling y'all, I'm excited to see everybody. Excited to see everybody. And to our Facebook family, why don't you give them a good God bless you? Yes, yes, yes. Get your Bibles if you would. I'm not going to be before you long. I've been ministering for 15 days in South Carolina, and 
I promise you there is no word to describe the tired that I am. It's not a language in the dictionary to describe it. But I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm tired and excited at the same time. I'm excited about what God is doing and what he has been speaking in the atmosphere over his people. And I believe that we are in the finest hour of our lives. If anybody else believed that, you ought to give God a praise right now. I believe we are in the finest hour of our lives. And we have not seen yet what God is about to do. I'm telling you, I just, I, I feel a witness in this building and I'm talking, I believe tonight I'm going to be talking to somebody in Facebook because when God began to speak to me and give me this word earlier today, I was going to come in the service and just let pastor minister and I was going to just sit this one out, but I believe that God dropped something in my spirit today and, um, it's noteworthy. You turn with me to the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter. The book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter. I'm on seven. The book of Isaiah. I'm telling you, God is doing something awesome. Hoo, 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 hoo. He is doing something awesome. The 45th chapter, yes, Nettie. And the eighth verse, Isaiah 45. 45 and 8. When I saw this scripture, I will tell you how I came about uh, embarking upon this scripture. Because many times we are looking for a word from the Lord. And the Lord has already made known of what he is going to do for us. When I saw Isaiah 45 and 7, he said, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace, national well-being, and I create physical evil calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Somebody said, well, why does the Lord, why does he do all of these things? Because he is the one that is always, throughout eternity, he is in control. My God, he is in control. Because he is determined to stay in control. The Lord had to create his own adversary so that everything he create can be subject to him. I don't think y'all just heard that. Everything that he created had to become subject to him. So the enemy is not some wild spirit that is out there doing whatever he wants to do. He is governed by God. His assignment from the very beginning was determined by God. Everything that he was going to be allowed to do in your life, it was predetermined. But so was your victory. Oh, somebody better say something here. So was your victory. I'm going to prove it to you in a minute. So was your victory. I kept hearing the Lord say, I chose to help you. I chose to help you. Somebody said, well, you know what? I called on the Lord and the Lord helped me. That ain't how that went. You were handpicked. You were handpicked that from the time you took your, listen, your first breath, the Lord was going to continue to help you because he chose you to help you. Good Lord, have mercy. Good Lord, have mercy. That's why, that's why even when you don't feel it, you can say, the Lord is helping me. That's why when you don't even know which way you're going, you can say, you know what? Somebody said, well, well, well you know what? How it's going to turn out? I'm not going to worry about it because I've been chosen for the Lord to help me. 
He's got to help me because he hadn't picked me to help me. Ooh, God, I don't want to get ahead of myself right here. I don't want to get ahead of myself. And he said here, good Lord Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. My God, my God, my God, my God. He said, I make peace, well-being, and I create physical evil calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Let fall in showers, you heavens, from above. And let the skies rain down righteousness. Listen to this, people. The pure, spiritual, heaven-born possibilities. That thing got me. Heaven-born possibilities, which means what the Lord has predetermined to do for me was heaven-born. It was heaven-born. I want you to understand that. Everything that you're praying into existence right now is heaven-born. The Lord has already put that in your DNA. Good Lord have mercy. That's why, that's why a lot of times we wonder why we cannot be shaken when it comes down to certain things. It's because it was heaven-born. The possibility of God doing it and the possibility of the Lord bringing it to pass was not predetermined by whether or not, watch this, by whether or not you were good enough or you were able enough. Because sometimes we get that twisted and we think that it's because of our own works. We think that it's because of all of what we do and our fasting and our praying that causes God to do it. But what you don't understand is that when the Lord has an assignment on your life and there is something that God has predestined for your life the Lord got to help you if he don't help nobody else I'm not hearing y'all tell somebody because I'm a part of somebody else's destiny the Lord watch this let me let me let me let me say this the Lord had to help me he had to help me he had to help me the Lord had to help me because I was Asia's help. I don't think y'all understand what I just said. Had the Lord not helped me, she would have died. The Lord had to help me because I was Pastor Soroya's help. The Lord had to help me because when God showed me that Pastor Shell had cancer and the Lord sent me over to pray for her and the doctors, oh y'all, declared her cancer free after God healed her body, the Lord helped me because I was her help. I don't think you're getting that. I don't think you're getting that because somebody is going through a hard time right now, but the Lord has got to help you because you're somebody else's help. My God, I wish I had somebody to say some up in here. I said, the Lord got to help you because you're somebody else's help. There is something that is locked inside of you for somebody that you have not even met yet. That's why you can tell the devil tonight, I cannot be defeated. I will not be defeated because the Lord has to help me because I'm somebody else's help. My God. That's why you ought to always say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. And the help me, Lord, is not about you. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, because I'm somebody else's help. Help me, Lord, because, because I have not met the person that's going to need my experience. Help me, Lord, not to faint in the day of adversity. Help me, God, not to take my adversity personal. Who is God talking to tonight? Help me, God, to understand that this thing is bigger than my emotions. It's bigger than what I am dealing with. It's bigger than what I am going through. I am somebody else's help. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I said, God, we're somebody else's help. He said, yes, yeah. so go to uh, the 48th chapter. He said, the third verse. What 
you are dealing with is not new. I have declared from the beginning the former things which happened in time past to Israel. They went forth. Y'all, 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 y'all. They went forth not as a people. They went forth because they came out of my mouth. The reason why you haven't been destroyed thus far because you came out of God's mouth. The reason why the enemy can't do nothing with you because you are a result of what God has spoken. I don't think y'all understand that. He said, I determined the end from the beginning. Already know how it's going to turn out. Who am I talking to? That's the reason why I gave you the scripture that said, All things work together for the good to them that love God, to those that are called according to his purpose. Why? Because everything that we are right now, it was predestined in the beginning how we were going to end up. And right now, whether you think it was the devil or not, you are in the plan of God. Oh my God. Who am I talking to? Everything that you have encountered was a part of the plan of God. Who am I talking to? Because somebody said, well, why did my life have to go like this? Well, why did I have to deal with this? Why did I have to experience this? Why am I dealing with this right now? Watch this. Watch this. If I came out of the mouth of God, then everything that he speaks becomes a seed planted in a ram. Lord have mercy. And when you start speaking the opposite of what God is doing because you're not aware of what he's doing, you start digging up your seed. It's almost like you're digging up your life. Come on, somebody. It's almost as if you're planted in a position because in a few days, you're going to start growing in that position. You're going to start prospering. But the minute you start talking crazy, you start digging up your roots. Who am I talking to? Who is God talking to? Tell your neighbor, don't let your mouth dig up your seed. Tell your neighbor, don't let your mouth dig up who you are. Tell your neighbor, don't let your mouth crossbreed you in the process. Don't let, watch Chris, don't let your mouth switch you over. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. Don't let your mouth switch you over into the hands of the enemy. Because you don't appreciate the fact that God is working something out in you. And when you become begrudging about that, you flip the situation. And now you are the workings of the enemy. And now you become the enemy of God. got to be careful. You got to be careful. You got to be careful in the day of testing. You got to be careful when everything looks like it's going backwards. Because it's going like that because watch this, watch this. What you say out of your mouth is being tested. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. You got to be careful when you think you're in warfare and you start talking stuff out of your mouth. You got to hold on to your confession. I don't care what the devil is saying. You got to hold on to your confession and let the enemy know I will not change what I am saying about what I know God has revealed to me. I'm not giving you. I don't expect you to understand it because the scripture tell me that he's given me the hidden mysteries. It's a secret. And I can't, listen, I can't explain to you what God is doing. I can't explain to you why I'm going in the direction that I'm going in. How do you know when you get ready to walk in the purpose? When you don't care who don't walk in the purpose with you. Who is God talking to? 
Who is God talking to? No, you hit that place in God where you say, I don't care about nothing. You hit a place in God where you say, I don't care what I lose. I don't care who I got to leave. All I know is that God has switched something on in my faith level. And oh, y'all, come on. And I'm steadfast and unmovable. And I feel something different in my spirit. I know that I'm not serving the Lord with my emotions. But I'm serving the Lord because I'm locked into his word. I'm serving him detached from what I feel. I'm serving him in spite of what I feel. Oh, you don't hear God tonight. Somebody may be listening by, by, by Facebook. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm serving him blind. I'm serving him and I cannot even trace him. I'm serving him by telling him I trust you and I don't even know what you're doing. I, listen, I serve him by telling him I trust you and you don't even have to tell me what you're doing. All I know is this thing got to work out. All I know is this thing got to turn out. Wait, 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 wait. Not because I cry and not because I speak in tongues and not because I shout, but because I am the manifestation of what has come out of the mouth of God. Who am I talking to? Y'all ain't saying nothing, which means on your bed while you are crying, on your bed when you feel depressed, you can't even stop this next level that God is about to do in your life because you are a manifestation of what has already come out of his mouth. It's too late. It's out of his mouth. Wait, 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 wait. It's too late. It's out of his mouth. Wait, 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 wait. You already in motion. You on the express train. It ain't no stops. This ain't the local train. This the express train. I'm not hearing y'all. The speed is different than the local train. Who, who am I talking to? Because the train don't intend to ever stop until it gets to destiny. There's a certain speed that God is taking you in. And some of you all are trying to hold on and talk about, God, I don't think I'm ready. It's too late. Because, oh, y'all, some of y'all are saying, this thing is moving too fast for me. It's too late. Lord have mercy Jesus I'm not ready for this how do you know you in it because I'm not ready for this how do you know you're in the perfect place because I'm not ready for this I wish I had one witness this is too much for me oh God what I have to deal with is too heavy for me and not only is it too heavy for me, but you have not given me anybody that can help me understand what it is you're doing in me. Oh, y'all, I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. So I have to walk in victory and persecution at the same time. I'm not hearing y'all because deep in this hour is not possible. Come on, somebody. It's not popular. Consecrated in this hour is not popular. Who am I talking to? Everybody wants to be maligned. Don't nobody really want to tip over and go in the third dimension and pray from heaven down. Everybody don't want to be appear to be different and stranger and awkward. Who am I talking to? But tonight the Lord said, I chose you. Why do you think I keep helping you? Wait, 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 wait. Sit down, sit down. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me do this. 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 It ain't nothing worse. I've been on the train before. 
and you get on the Acela train, which is the first class train. And I've gotten on the train before. And the people, they let you get on. You go to the door, and they don't stop you. They just say, come on, get on the train. And you get on the train. And I saw somebody one time get on in first class. And they sat there. The person asked me, they want something to drink? They said, yeah, they want something to drink. A few minutes later, they didn't, they didn't put them off. They didn't say anything else to them. The person was sitting there. The conductor came through. And he said, let me see your ticket. And the man pulled out his ticket. And he said, sir, you sitting in first class, but you don't belong in first class. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. In first class, they feed you and give you anything you want that's on the menu. Because you paid the price to ride express. Oh, I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. First class doesn't mean I'm high. It means I've decided. Come on here, somebody. To be the first one to tell God yes. I've decided. Come on, somebody. That I'm not afraid to tell the Lord yes. I've decided that I have to work first class. Why? Because the ticket is more expensive. And some of you all are saying, why do I have to pay this price? Because God chose you to be first class. No, let me prove it to you. He said, mm, I have declared the beginning, the former things from the beginning. Watch this. Therefore, I have declared, fifth verse, things to come to you from old. What is coming to you is not new. What's coming to you now is what he's finally getting you ready to receive. It's always been there, but you wasn't ready to receive it. That's why when the Lord finally starts blessing you, there's a, there's a familiar spirit about it. They call it deja vu. You know what deja vu is? Deja vu is the Lord allowed your spirit to be there before. I'm not hearing y'all. When you get a deja vu, it is an indication that I am on schedule because I've seen this before. I wish I could teach this like I felt it tonight. So watch this. So then we are not walking... We're not walking necessarily on new paths. We're just finding the original intent of God. That's why you feel so comfortable in it because, because this is what he intended. Isn't it something how we can live the majority of our lives on this track and that track and this track. And then finally when you land on the track that God has already intended for you to be on. It feels like it's natural. It feels like second nature. It doesn't feel like you got to work it up and you got to try to make it happen. And you got to try to feel it. No, it's almost like breathing in and out. Come on somebody. The ministry feels natural. The things that God has given you to do is natural. The blessings is coming. And it feels natural when God works miracles. It's as if your spirit is saying, I already knew that that was coming. It's like when God opens up a door that the devil thought was shut. It's like you rejoicing, but at the same time, you are in agreement because you said something in my spirit knew this was coming. My flesh was shaken. A little bit. But my spirit was confident. Anybody ever been there? Anybody ever been there? My flesh feels a little shaky. But my insides is confident. And every time I start shaking... My insides stabilize me. 
Y'all, this scripture, when I read this thing today, he said, do you know that I created the light? Do you know I created everything? He said, when you get into class tonight, when you go live tonight, you remind the people that I'm God. Come on, we done forgot that he's God. And we act like the things that we need God to do, that the Lord is not capable of doing it. But the Bible says that the things that God is about to do for you are heaven-born possibilities. I'm God. Wait a minute. I'm God. I don't think y'all hearing that. I don't think y'all hearing that. I'm God. I made everything. I can do anything. I made you the first time. And then I made you over. I, I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. Did y'all say that? Did anybody see that? I blessed you the first time. And I can bless you again. Y'all, come on here, somebody. I sent you a miracle. Oh, God. One time and I can do it again. That's why he said tonight, I want you to remember the former things. Remember what I did for you. Oh, God. Somebody done forgot. Somebody done forgot. The reason why we can't persevere to the next level because we done forgot what he did for us. Wait a minute, I'm going to say something in a minute. Sit down, sit down. We done forgot what he did for us. I came in here tonight. And we were finishing up everything in here. And Sister Trina walked in. And they was playing some music. And she was, she started singing a song. When she started singing that song, like a rose trampled on the ground. Y'all better, better know that the spirit realm is not coincidental. He determined from the beginning what the end was going to be. Now watch this. I'm going to give you a short sample before I tell you this testimony. So we needed to rig these speakers. And pastor called somebody that had the ability, that had a brother that can rig the speakers. So the speakers had to go up today. Because the people that was putting them in, this was their only window. I'm due to go up on television next week. We didn't have any more time. But he knows the beginning. He knows the end. And I determined how it's going to end from the beginning. So he said the day that I was born, she going to need some speakers in 2018. See, y'all better, I ain't hear nobody talk to me. The day I had my first cry, speakers. Rigging the speakers was in my book of life under my name. Y'all, I don't think y'all, I don't think y'all see this. Y'all better see this. Before Pastor Boyd breathed his first breath, a church called New Greater Bethel and a tent was under his name. I don't think y'all hear that. I don't think y'all hear that means everything he's about to do. Oh, it was already, oh God, with your name on it. No, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch, watch this, sit down. So, pastor calls this man, and he says, my brother does this for big time tours, but my brother, he's out of town. I haven't spoken to him in some weeks. I don't know where he is. So then Brother Wooten said, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Home Depot. And I called Brother Wooten on Sunday, and I said, I'm going to need you Monday. Because he was going to stay in Maryland. I said, I'm, I'm going to need you Monday. I need your help. He said, okay, I'll be there. He gets to the airport. Flight sold out. He go and stand by. All of a sudden, the flight opens up. And two seats. And the lady said, I can get you on the flight. So 
Brother Wooten gets on the flight. He lands, gets here. Nettie says, I need you to go to Home Depot because we need a rigging gear for the speaker. Brother Wooten gets in the car, goes to Home Depot. He picks up, to the best of his knowledge, what he thought would be the best rigging gear. He's going down the aisle of Home Depot, and here comes the brother of the man in the same aisle. He said, somebody got into a fight on the tour, and they came to the tour, and I ended up back home. Y'all are hearing me. God used his own adversary to make them go against each other because Juanita Bynum needed a rigging gear for this studio. You better, yo, all things are working together for the good. Somebody better give God a praise. Something is happening right now. Somebody is being disqualified because God got a miracle with your name on it. Somebody losing right now because it's time for you to win. Somebody is getting something snatched out of their hands because of disobedience. Because God is about to put it in your hand. Who am I preaching to? Wait, wait, wait. Sit down, y'all. Wait, wait, let me tell you the rest of the story. It's like the Lord said, I'm going to need y'all to get into a fight right now. It's like the Lord loosed the enemy and said, let them turn on each other. Because I need him in New York, in Home Depot. By the time Brother Wooten get there, and he told Brother Wooten, that ain't the right wig. Come with me. I've got just what you need. Are you here? He said, my rig that I can give you, it'll hold 300 pounds. How many pounds do you have to hang? He said, just 250. He said, here, I've got what you need. The speakers are hanging up there. Because it was in the record with Juanita Bynum's name on. No, y'all, y'all. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. I... See, the reason why, the reason why you got to praise God. Because if you don't have it right now. In your hand, can I make an announcement? He working on it. Oh, y'all better give God a praise. He working on it. He's speaking to somebody right now on your behalf. Hey, a divine connection is in operation. with the word so y'all just gotta forgive me therefore I have declared things to come to you from of old before they came to pass I announced them to you so that you could not say my idol has done this and my graven image have done this. My mama did this for me. My auntie did this for me. My daddy did this for me. My molten image have commanded them. But watch this. You have heard these things foretold. Now you see this fulfillment. And will you not bear witness to it? Okay. Stop right there. He prophesied. 
to us. Speaks a word to us. Not allowing you to know what he's going to do. I saw this thing and it just blew my mind. That the only way that I can call it into existence, it's already back there. If I'm just now creating this thing for you, I'm behind schedule as God. I finish my work. Well, Lord, I need. I, no, no, no. The reason why you're asking me for what you need. Because I already got what you need. The reason why you have a need, because I have an answer. And I'm trying to help you to know that I'm God. Oh, y'all. Let me go on this side because maybe, maybe people over there didn't get that. Well, why am I, why am I dealing with this? Why am I dealing with this? Because he taps you on your shoulder and said, I want you to know me. Wait a minute, God, what you mean? I want you to know me. Yeah. Well, Lord, how am I going to know you? Okay, let me take that car right there. Because there's some things about me I want you to know. This month, I may want you to know that I'm a way maker. Next month, I may, I may want you to know that I'm a healer. The next month, I may let some craziness take place so that you can find out that I'm a mind regulator. The next month, I may let some things happen that you become offended and you become hurt because I need you to know that I'm a heart fixer. How you gonna get to know me? You don't get to know me jumping and shouting. You don't get to know me speaking in tongues. You get to know me by what you suffer and only by what you suffer, then you learn what I have the ability to do in your life. I walk in here tonight. I walk in here tonight. She sings. And I stopped. I was getting ready to leave out and go upstairs. And I stopped and I said, wait a minute. What is she singing? And she was just a singing. Like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall. And thought of me. Above all. And everybody was just in here just... Walking around and doing whatever they was doing. And I was frozen. Yes. Yeah. I was literally frozen. And I'm saying, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is this? What is this? Took my phone out. And I walked all the way down here and I started recording her. I couldn't hardly hold it together. Because I remember when I tried to kill myself. And that's the only song that I would play for the first year that I was in the greatest torment of my life. And during that torment, the Lord would be prophesying to me and I couldn't hardly believe it. I'm like, well, God, what are you saying? I mean, everything is in a shamble. I done lost everything. And God is saying, but I'm going to use you. And I'm saying, no. And then everybody's like, she finished. Yeah, God threw with her. It is, and all is over. And in my own mind, I'm saying, I can never recover from this. But God was saying, I'm going to use you. And I kept putting that song in my ears. I would get up and go to the gym. And I would walk on the treadmill. And I would listen to awakening sing. Like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above all. But watch this. For more than 20 something years. I got to give this testimony. I said to the Lord. Where do you want me? What is my ultimate ministry? I know my ministry is preaching. But what is my ultimate ministry? He said, I want you on television. This was more than 20 plus years ago. I said, you want me on television? 
And I wasn't on television. I, you know, I was just starting out in ministry and, you know, had some decent speaking engagements. But, but God said, I want you on television. And so I used to look at, watch this, I used to always look at CNN. And he said, I want you on television like that. Now that was back then. That was back then. I want you to see this. So one day, I, I'm sitting in my basement and I turn on the TV and they said, Crepo Dollar is going to be in town in New York. And the Lord said, I want, Pastor, remember that. The Lord said, I want you to get up and go. I said, well, I just came back from revival. I'm tired. He said, I want you to go to the meeting. I go to the meeting. And when I get there, the Lord said to me, I want you to take a check and I want you to sign it. And I want you to put it in your Bible. And he said, and when the spirit of the Lord get high in the service, I'm going to tell you what to write it for. And I said, okay, God, I'm traveling with this. I'm not stopping here for an offer, and I want you to hear what God is saying. I'm not trying to set you up for nothing. I want you to hear what God is saying. I sat there. The service got high. And while everybody started running, I mean, it wasn't like that was in the, up there out on Long Island. The Spirit of the Lord said, write the check for $25,000. And I said, well, Lord, why am I, why am I writing the check? For no, I'm, I'm asking the Lord because I didn't have a problem with giving. And anybody in here know me, know whatever God tell me to do, I'm just going to give it. So it wasn't, it wasn't a resistance. I wanted to know what is this going to be connected to? He said, write the check and ask me for the kind of television ministry he has. But watch this. He said, when the spirit get high, you're going to connect your seat. Uh, Y'all ain't saying. With television. And Pastor Dollar leaned back and he started speaking in tongues. And his Bible was open. And I jumped up and slapped my $25,000 check on top of his Bible. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And I watched it. And God allowed me to go on television. But I went through all of those changes. But see, people will look now and say, oh, look at what God has done. No, 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 no. But when the Lord prophesied that to me, who am I talking to right now? I didn't have nothing. When God continued to prophesy that to me, my life was in the valley. But when it goes out of the mouth of God, it goes to the valley with you. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. That word will go to the valley. It'll go to the gutter. But God will not change his mind. He don't change his mind. He's not like us. God ain't bipolar. He don't prophesy something to you and then say, now make sure you be good. He already know you're going to miss it. But he's not trusting you to be perfect. He trusting you to be faithful. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. See, I'm going to help some of y'all because some of y'all ain't been perfect, but you've been faithful. I'm helping somebody on Facebook. I'm helping a pastor right now. I'm helping an intercessor right now that feel like giving up. But no matter what, you kept coming back to the assignment. It doesn't matter what you went through. You kept coming back to the assignment. And that's why the God got to bless you because his word said, a faithful man, not a perfect man, but a Faithful men shall abound in blessings. Who is God preaching to? Who is God preaching to? The enemy can try to disqualify you. But what he can't do nothing with is your faithfulness. Woo, somebody in here, somebody in here, I feel like running. 
out of this church. No, it didn't matter because I wasn't perfect, but I held on to my faithfulness. I kept telling the Lord, but I love you. I kept telling God, I don't understand. Yes, I tried to kill myself, but I still love you in my heart. I'm not hearing y'all. I stayed faithful to what I thought about him as God. What is faithfulness? Faithfulness is not perfect faith. Faithfulness is continuing to believe what you believe about him being God. I still believe you, God. I still believe you, God. I don't have enough money, but I still believe you, God. Oh, God, I can't get nobody to talk to me. I don't have enough connection, but I still believe you, God. I may not see the answer right now, but I still believe you, God. And I'm going to shout like you, God. I'm going to speak in tongues like you, God. I'm going to praise like you, God. And the Lord said uh, that I would have cut you off. Uh, but he said, it was your, he watch this, watch this. He said, but your praise refrained me. I'm not hearing y'all. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. Don't let the devil count your praise as cheap. Because even when you are faithful in your praise to God, what you're saying to God is that I'm going through hell. But I still bless your name. I still glorify your name. Because that is the thing that refrains. Y'all, 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 y'all sit down for a second. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show you something. Some of y'all is shouting on a hidden thing. He said, it's the hidden thing that I have reserved for you. I'm not hearing y'all. It's the hidden thing. It's the hidden thing. It's the hidden thing. And the hardest part about it is you can't get nobody to understand it. And you can't tell nobody what God has given you. Because the Lord has locked your mouth shut. Because even if you start trying to tell it, they wouldn't even believe it. That's why during that season, I couldn't tell people what God was telling me. Because none of them saw this day coming. Who am I talking to? But God connected me with people. People that believed that what came out of God's mouth, he was going to perform it. He connected me with people that refused not to give up on me, but not to give up on his word. Who am I talking to? When they can't trust you, you got to trust his word. You ain't praising him like you believe. 
believe it. You ain't praising him like you believe it. Sit down for a second, sit down for a second, sit down for a second. They are what you're getting ready to get. They are. They are created and now called into fulfillment. Wait a minute. Let me say this again. They are created and now called. Step on, come here. Come here. Create it. But I just called him to come here. I didn't create him while he was coming. I called what was already created. I don't think y'all just heard that. I don't think y'all just, I didn't, I didn't create him. I called what was already created. That's the part the devil don't want you to praise him about. That's the part the That's the part the enemy don't want you to praise him about. Because guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? When I got in another realm, when I got in another realm, I start speaking those things would be not. I start speaking this stuff into existence. I start writing it down on paper. I started organizing. And somebody said, Well, where are you gonna get the money from? I don't have the money. I don't know where it is. But guess what? I saw it. I'm not giving y'all. He spoke it. And if he spoke it in the spirit realm, it's already created. My job is to call it in the being. I'm not hearing y'all. God will speak to somebody with your name on it. Don't you play God cheap. My God, I just felt that. The Holy Ghost will speak to somebody with your name and they have never met you before. God talking to somebody right there on Facebook. I just felt that. I just felt that. You trying to get your breakthrough through the realm of familiarity, through people that you know. But God is going to speak to somebody. Why can't get nobody to say nothing? Why can't get nobody to say nothing? He spoke to somebody. Watch this, 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 watch this. Watch this. When I became faithful to what I believed about. He spoke to somebody. I'll tell you what, how, how, he, how he started. Sit down, I gotta, I gotta tell you how he started. I'll tell you how he started. He started when I was driving down the street one day. My breakthrough hadn't came yet. Riding down the street one day. And when it is time for the manifestation of what he has said. He changes your language. And you start acting a little crazy. <laughs> you know, when I was little, the only way I can describe it when I was little, I had an invisible friend. God get ready to bring that thing into manifestation. You can't tell nobody so you start talking to yourself like this. Start getting in your car riding and going, well, you're going to do this. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be like this and it's going to be like that. And somebody come in your car and you just stop talking. They say, how you doing now? I'm doing fine. 
You only feel this, you only feel this spirit of confidence when you're by yourself. Because what you believe in God for is not being challenged. Not here, y'all. And the only reason why you can't talk about it, watch this. The only reason why you can't talk about it to people because you're going to always find somebody that feel like you ain't worthy. You're going to always find some people that feel like you shouldn't have, watch this, not a second chance but another chance. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. And so I'm not talking to everybody tonight. I'm not talking to everybody on Facebook. I'm only talking to somebody in this room and somebody on Facebook that is saying to God, I know you have called me to have another chance. Oh, I missed it the first time, but you're calling me to have another chance. God, I didn't do what you told me to do the first time, but I believe you're calling me to have another chance. Another chance. Another chance. Another chance. Another chance. Why? Why is the Lord gonna give me? Why is the Lord gonna give me another chance? He said, "Cause I've invested too much. I can't start all over with somebody else. It's too late." Because the people that I got to use to take into this thing, I need your experience. So I can't jump start your life all over again. I, oh, is anybody talking in here? Anybody talking in here? Anybody talking in here? Anybody talking in here? Because mm -hmm. see, sometimes, watch this. Sometimes, sometimes he said in that, in that same chapter, he said, and, 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 and everybody may not, may not even agree. Everybody may not even agree with what I'm getting ready to say. But, um, but sometimes the Lord, he just got to do it because he don't want to be embarrassed. So if you're in this building tonight, you want them people, he going to do it for his name's sake. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to God up in here. No, 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 no. He gonna do it for his name. Say, who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? He said, he said, I didn't deliver Israel because they was good. I had to deliver because my name was on the line. Y'all better open up your mouth and give God a praise up in here because God's name is on the line with your life. Who am I? That's why he put you out. That's why God delivered you. That's why God had to allow you to operate under the power and the spirit of grace because now your time has come I don't know who I'm talking to your time has come and he is going to do it for his name's sake touch somebody and say my time has come don't touch nobody dead I said touch somebody and say my time has come
Watch this. For the sake of time, let me paraphrase this. Because the eighth verse said, when I called you, I knew you was going to deal treacherously. I knew you wasn't going to get it right. I knew you wasn't going to do it perfect. But this one, I done chose this one. And I got to help them to help me. Can 
I help somebody up in here? Because you're letting the devil drive you crazy about something you can get again. No, somebody, oh, come on here, somebody. Sometimes you got to walk the floor and tell God, I don't want nothing that you don't want me to have. Whatever it is you don't want me to have, you take it and you let my spirit become content with it. But I'm not going to dig up my testimony. I'm not going to dig up my seed. I'm not going to say to God, I done sold all these seeds. I done gave all these people. And how could you let this happen? If you want it to happen, it is well with my soul. Somebody better open up your mouth again because y'all looking at me like I'm crazy.
But guess what? If the devil had killed me, ah, come on somebody. See, that's why your answer, the answer of somebody else is sitting in you. Hold up, Okoshaya. You're the divine connection to somebody else's promise. Who am I talking to? But she didn't know no better. She was just coming to master class because God said come to master class. But she didn't know that what was connected to the master's class was her vision, was her dream. I'm not giving y'all. What am I saying? If you are in this building, God is making your dream happen. If you are watching the internet, God is making your dream happen. Who am I talking to? You better praise him for your dream. God, I feel you in here. Some of y'all giving God away. I said praise him for your dream. Because in your praise, your voice is resounding in the spirit realm. And God is sending your help. I said he's sending your help. You gotta stop saying, help me, Jesus. He's sending your help. Help is on the way. Every time I say that, you gotta shout. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. On the way. Whatever you need is on the way. Whatever you need. I heard the Holy Ghost said, I'm sending help for your emergency. He said, 
I have declared from the beginning the former things which happened in times past to Israel. They went forth from my mouth and I made them known. Watch this. Watch this. Then, suddenly, I did them. I don't think y'all just heard that. I don't think y'all just heard that. If the Lord has ever spoken a word to you, then I hear the Holy Ghost said that you qualify tonight for a suddenly. You better give God a praise up in here. I said if the Holy Ghost said has ever spoken anything to you, you qualify for a suddenly. And the Holy Ghost said, I'm doing it now. I'm doing it now. I'm doing it now. I'm doing it now. Hold on, Abakasa. Suddenly. And then I did it. that's got a vision. You watching my internet when she walk across this floor. I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost just said. He didn't say sit at your computer. He said when she walk across this floor, you better jump up and give God a crazy praise. Because God is walking you into your miracle. Walk in it. Walk in it. You better give God a praise. You better give God a praise. You just walked into your mirror. You just walked into your dream. You just walked into your vision. It's coming to pass for you. Suddenly. Suddenly. It's coming to pass. Right now. Somebody better praise him, I feel it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, I feel something prophetic in here. I feel the prophetic words of God being revived. I feel the prophetic nature of God being revived in you. Hold up a cassette. Hey, someone I'm a catch you, hey, hey, hey. You better open up your mouth. You better shout the flesh over you. You better shout fear and doubt and unbelief over you. Grab a hold of your faithfulness and begin to praise God. Grab a hold of your faithfulness and begin to praise God. Praise him because I've been faithful. Y'all better bless him because that's when you're going to get it. You're going to get your breakthrough because you've been faithful. You're going to get your miracle because you've been faithful. You're going to get your breakthrough because you've been faithful. Pray 
said the enemy can't take it. If you give God praise, he can't take it. The Bible said God inhabits the praises of his people. Who am I talking to? 
but in order to qualify to be able to say that you've been faithful, you gotta suffer rejection, you gotta suffer denial, you gotta lose the credit. Who am I talking to? You gotta be ignored, you gotta be looked over, and the Lord wants to know will you still pray when ain't nobody watching? Will you still pass when ain't nobody watching? Will you still preach when you're down and you need somebody to preach to you? Will you still prophesy? Who will be faithful?
weeks or four days left for barely nothing and then called a meeting and got big bishop on the phone and called me a meeting with her and said can you believe this is what God did for you and there would be a bishop that says I don't believe this woman of God did for me I cried myself to sleep and while I was sleeping how in the bed the spirit of the Lord visited another woman in another country in her dream had never met me. She said, God took her by her hand and told her, take care of Juanita Bible. And the next day, sent me more than $25,000. And within maybe a two months time, it had been over $200,000. He said, your spirit messed up because the enemy will attack when he know you at the gate of your grave. That it never happened to me. So here I am again. Write down all these plans. The Lord said do master class. First, the Lord said to me, go back home. Shut down your church. I was pastoring in Atlanta. And when Pastor Boyd left, the Lord said, shut down your church. Our church was thriving. He said, shut it down. And come back home. And help pastor. And people start saying, you got your own ministry. You got your own faith. You can do your own. God said no. He said, I blessed you the way that I blessed you when you were attending New Greater Bethel because you was faithful. I wasn't perfect, but you could not charge my faithfulness. You could not. You could not. And the Lord said to me, serve Joshua. Don't serve Joshua the way you serve Moses. You never too late to serve God. Well, the Lord gave me that word. And that being had to leave. Because all I knew, watch this, is that I needed a breakthrough. And I found out that the revelation to a breakthrough. instead of doing it because I want to be faithful. Then here God come again. He said, write the vision and I did. And I started talking about what I want. And here he picked somebody else up in another city and said, here the Lord told me to give you this word. somebody in another country to give me over 200,000. You shook somebody in another state and all these people, I didn't know them. When I read the scripture, he said, remember the former things. He said, you don't know how to ask me for greater until you remind me of my record. I said, okay, now, send the million.
I can't get nobody to talk to me right there. I can't get nobody to praise God right there. Come on, y'all not doing this thing right. If the Lord done blessed you with a pit toe and you didn't have no money, and the Lord blessed you with a station wagon and you didn't have no money, and the Lord blessed you with a Jeep and you don't have no money, then ask him for the Mercedes because it's his record. He said, in order for you to ask me for what you need, you got to put me in remembrance. You got to remember the proper things. You got to remember what I did. I don't think y'all understand this. Do you not know that you are standing on faith ground? Do you not know that you are standing in a building that a man of God got this building by faith? Do you not know that the very grounds in here is faith ground?
is calling you a fool. And the enemy is telling you that you're stupid. And the enemy, you're watching my internet too, is telling you how much money you could be doing getting for what you do. But God said, don't cash in your faithfulness. I, I don't think you heard what him. He said, don't cash it in. How can I make this a reality to you? It's like having a lottery ticket. And you don't know it's the winning ticket. And somebody tell you, I'll give you $500 for that ticket. And you give them the ticket, and it was worth billions.
The circles are about to change, prophet of God. Ekete de bo shata da basaya, bo shata da basiande, ekete da basa. Your circles are about to change, man of God. Akuda de be kate be sa. God is calling you up into the high place. Ekete da basaya. You've been looking, said the Lord, for a word because you're the person that gives the word. But the Lord said, I'm about to speak to you out of the fiery bush. You're about to have an enlightened experience, said the Lord. For the Spirit of the Lord said, I'm about to be your teacher in another dimension that you know not of. And yes, healing is about to erupt in your hands. You will raise people from the dead and the spirit of the living God. You think I have used you, but it has only been the beginning. But now I'm getting ready to use you as a mouthpiece. I'm getting ready to let a sound come up out of your voice that has not been heard before. And it shall come from a divine place. And it shall come from the third dimension. Send the spirit of the living God. For I shall awaken in you that thing that you had when you first taught it with me. I shall revive it, said God. And I must tell you, and you would never return back to this place again. Somebody give God a shout right now.
No, 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 no. 
to these next 21 days, it won't just be no Bible reading. If you read it, suddenly, I'm going to make it happen. You better give God a praise up in here. You better give God a praise up in here. The manifestation of his word is about to turn your life inside out. And for the next 21 days, twice a day, I'm going to read it.
And there is nothing that God is going to do for you without your belief system in Him. In Him. I keep hearing that word faithful. I keep hearing that word faithful. I keep hearing that word faithful. That God is returning the spirit of faithfulness back to the body of Christ. He's returning the spirit of faithfulness back to the people that operate in the service of the Lord. There's a reward in it and there's a strength in it. I get strength in being faithful. I get strength in doing what God has called me to do. I get strength in doing it behind closed doors when nobody's watching. My God. I just keep hearing God say, if we don't care, we'll get the credit, God will get the reward. I just said something like this. And you're watching if I get a in this building tonight and I sense it on the internet. I've been ministering because the Lord said every month give me a consecration. Every month for something here. And I've been faithful. I didn't say perfect, I said faithful. And this time the Lord said I'm ready for my word to come to pass. I'm ready for you not to believe me your emotions, but to stand on what I say to you. I'm talking to you. Some of you that are part of church in the air, I'm talking to you. I don't need your emotions in this. I need you just to stand on my word. I need you to trust me when you can't trace me. And right now, in your house, I feel the presence of the Lord right now. Can I not show you? Somebody begin to worship him right now. In your house, I feel it. It's all here. I not see you. Somebody right there. Begin to speak in tongues right there. I saw it. That's your breakthrough. There it is. There it is. How did I not show you? There it is. There it is, woman. There it is. Somebody give God a praise in here. Somebody give God a praise in here for her.
so that my heart is what I'm asking God for. Hit that contact us button and show that 121. And you said, Dr. Bonham, I may not have 121. Well, I hear the Lord said, connect the seed to what he's saying tonight. Because the presence of the Lord is in this place and I can feel it. I don't know about anybody else. I don't know about anybody else. But there was a presence in this building tonight that God is divinely shifting things around. He's divinely shifting things around with your name on it. He's shifting ministry. He's shifting scholarships for your children. I just heard that in my spirit. Doors that you thought was closed, the Lord said, go back and knock again because I'm opening that door back up for you again. Somebody give God a shout in this place right now. Hit that contact us button and show that 121 right now and watch and see won't God open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive somebody clap your hands for Jesus